Saint David is the patron saint of Wales and this holiday is celebrated on the 1st of March each year. Wales is a small country at the very heart of the great British Isles. A mountainous, rugged but beautiful country. Its wet weather and misty landscape give it its lush green countryside and provides the fertile ground for its mysterious mythologies and folklore. Continually courted and conquered by some of the greatest civilizations in the Western world, the sense of independence and pride in the land, language and customs still holds strong today. This little patch of land at the very centre of Britain is well known for having more castles per square mile than any other place on the planet. However, Wales is also famous for its eccentric characters and its holy men. And perhaps its most famous holy man is the patron saint of Wales, Saint David. David is thought to have lived in around the 6th century. Born to another famous Welsh saint, Saint Non, the birth of the baby David is said to have happened at the very height of a great electrical storm on a coastal cliff top at the western edge of Wales. It was in West Wales where David founded his first monastic community at Pembrokeshire. David is said to have founded many such communities, including one at Glastonbury. The site in West Wales became known as St David's and a cathedral was finally constructed at the site in the early 12th century. St David's holds the title for the smallest city in Great Britain by population and this is thanks to the cathedral and its historic importance. The small hamlet was originally granted its city status in the 12th century but lost its title in 1886 and then regained it once more in 1994 on the orders of Her Majesty, Queen Elizabeth II. The site of St David's is thought to have been settled a little earlier by another great saint of the British Isles, St Patrick, who himself may have had Welsh roots Many miracles have been attributed to the Welsh Saint David. It is said that he was performing magical acts even before he left his mother's womb. David is told to have raised a young boy from the dead by splashing tears on his face. He cured the blind and, whilst preaching to a crowd, made the ground beneath him raise up in order to better communicate his message. In this story, a white dove is said to have landed on his shoulder. And this may have some interesting etymological roots, as we shall see momentarily. The devoted holy man is even thought to have been poisoned, but survived the crime thanks to his practices, prayer and meditation. Thought to be a relative of the famous King Arthur and so a contemporary of the magician Merlin and the Welsh poet prophet Taliesin, the saints' miracle working may well be looked upon as acts of magic themselves. Some accounts even suggest that the Welsh patron saint was born of a miracle, an immaculate conception. In this way, David can be linked to many other famous figures of law and legend. The Miracle Child. I will be exploring this idea more in later videos. The Welsh title for Saint David is Dewi Sant. However, the Welsh word for David is actually David. 
we can see here the term Dewey may not relate to the name David at all, but rather to a closer connection to God. Dewey may be a compound word where Dew meaning God in Welsh and I or E meaning the self, me or I are compounded or joined to give the idea of a closer connection to God or to be at one with God. In Hebrew, the name David is said to mean beloved and is written Dalet Vav Dalet. But a Kabbalistic interpretation of this name also relates to a closer connection to the deity. The letter Dalet is said to represent a door, a door to God. The central letter Vav signifies the spinal column, but also the serpent-like energies that traverse its length. The upright position of the letter Vav lends itself to this very idea. Here we can see how the ancient title of David symbolises a closer connection and a door to God, the universal energies, through working with the spinal column, the Vav. The Welsh term for David, David, has been linked to a well-known epithet for all Welsh people. Taff or Dav and the River Taff in Wales could also be related. Furthermore, the prefix Dav is phonetically similar to Dov and can be connected to the ideas of gentleness and timidity. The word Dov means tame, gentle, mild, that which will come to hand. Dovi is to tame, and dovoud means the act of training. The English term dove may be connected to this concept, in my own opinion, and this wonderfully ties in with the Welshman's miracle on the mound, where a dove comes to sit on the saint's shoulder. To further the allegory, we can see that the old Welsh word dovn is the feminine form of dovn, and dovn translates as deep or profound. The term dove means what glides or moves forward. Birds are sometimes called dovith or gliders, and dovith is phonetically similar to the term davith. This again links to the idea of the dove or the dove. What's more, the term dovur relates to water and so can also be linked to the water drinker David, whose other epithet was Dewi Dover or the water drinker. Another beautiful link within the Welsh language is the phonetically similar word Davad, which means sheep. And this again ties in with the idea of being led, guided, tamed or trained. A follower of God, the creative energy maybe, and a shepherd to the people, like the biblical shepherd King David perhaps. Once again, the term Dewi Sant does not relate to the name David in the old Welsh dictionary. Rather, the word Dew relates to God, and the letter I or E means me, myself or I. So, this may well be interpreted as a divine connection to the deity. Interestingly, another well-known Welsh epithet for the name David, and one that may only support this idea of a closer union to the all-pervading energy, is the word die. Die. What produces, effects, or gives existence? A name of the deity. In Wales, some of the old folk would say that the Welsh language was the language of the angels. And I agree with them, and don't doubt it for a second. 
With all this in mind, I think it is reasonable to link both the term Dewi and the name David to a closer union with God. And this, in all probability, is related to the ancient Indo-European or Aryan terms for God. Deus or Deus. Saint David was an ascetic and was said to follow a strict diet of only bread, herbs and water. He would emerge himself in the cold waters of the Irish Sea and the lakes and rivers of West Wales whilst in prayer and meditation and was devoted and committed to this way of life. David is said to have told his monks and his followers to bear their own yoke and plough their own land. And, of course, in the anatomical allegory, this is the yoking of the nervous system by means of chastity, creative energy conservation, or, as it is called today, semen retention. In this metaphor, the land is the body and the nervous system is the yoke and plough that, strengthened and enhanced by creative energy conservation, help to make the land or the body more fertile and help the seed to grow and bear its fruit, our true potential. It is worth remembering that the life of David is surrounded in mystery and uncertainty. All of the records and accounts of his miracles and activities come down to us from the 11th century, 500 years after his proposed lifetime. Like the mythologies and legends of old, the tales and stories of the saints are told long after their happening. Yet the allegories endure, and it is the allegories that are the most important thing. <laughs>